Yeah, so in today's installment of 10 Minute Histories, we're going to be talking about Maru Giuliani. He's an Italian uh, composer and guitarist, and today he's best known for his many compositions as well as his contribution to teaching. Uh, it's very difficult to find any syllabus that doesn't feature a lot of his works, and it usually varies from difficulty in um, degrees of playing where it goes from the beginner to the most advanced player so in that regard we regard him very highly as a contributor to the guitar syllabus and to the guitar repertoire in general so Mario Giuliani was um, an Italian composer and performer and he was born in the province of Bari in, in Italy and he was born in 1781 and he died 1829 and he played the cello and he, also a bit of the violin but he was also a gifted singer so just thought that's worth mentioning. So even though Giuliani was a competent singer, cellist and violinist today we remember him as one of the greatest guitarists and one of the greatest composers who wrote not only for advanced players but for beginners and everything in between. Through his music, Giuliani was able to define a new role for the classical guitar in European classical music and he rubbed shoulders with the likes of Beethoven and Rossini and apparently he even played probably cello in the first performance of Beethoven's Seventh Symphony in 1813. And so um, information is a bit scarce but it seems that uh, the first education Giuliani had in music was that his father apparently sent him and his brother. So Mauru and his brother, brother was named Nicholas. So sent both of them to Bologna. Um, Bologna, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Sorry again for that one, but uh, to study counterpoint. So Mauru and Nicholas both went to study counterpoint. And Nicholas actually also became a composer in Russia. And he also became a vocal instructor there. So uh, seems that music seems to have been kind of in the blood here. And so Giuliani apparently was known as a, some sort of a Casanova figure and um, he actually fathered an illegitimate daughter named uh, Maria Vilmuth and um, this was during a stay in Vienna and um, his, his wife's identity is actually unknown but she bore him two children, Emilia and Michelle, we'll speak about them a bit later on but it's just interesting to note as well, his father uh, the spelling for his father and his daughter's name seems to be the same, so it's difficult for me reading that, but um, his mother was also, her identity is also unknown, so it just goes to show there wasn't so much uh, written about and, doc and documentation on, on obviously, the guitar, guitar figures. So his family life, he had uh, one illegitimate daughter and two uh, legitimate daughters, one of the legitimate daughters was named um, Emilia and the other one was named Michelle and both of them became prominent musicians. Uh, Emilia actually played duets with her father so Emilia and, and Mauru played duets together and in 19, sorry in 18, in 1828 they uh, gave a performance and uh, to very good reviews where they played uh, together and uh, Emilia so this is Emilia Giuliani, his daughter, is also um, known, well today, well known for a set of preludes that she composed and it's still played rather often today. And Michel became a Professor de la Chant at the Paris Conservatory, which was basically a, a, a singing instructor at the Paris Conservatory. So you can see how, how they branched out into music as well. So his talent seemed to have uh, been hereditary. prolific in the style of theme and variation and this was a very popular style in Vienna at the time and probably the best example of his theme and variation style is his variations on a theme by Handel and this is opus 107 and it illustrates a mastery of the theme and variation style and also his variations on the Austrian Volkslied so Volkslied is like uh, Austrian or German probably for like um, Volkslied uh, 
Star Spangled Banner, God Save the Queen, uh, what do you call those? It's like, uh, sorry my English is failing me, but you guys will figure that out, I'll, yeah. And then the theme that's used in Giuliani's variations on the theme by Handel is the theme from the that's known as Harmonious Blacksmith. And just worth mentioning, I think, is that Giuliani even wrote works for guitar and voice, which is quite interesting. And Giuliani was given uh, the title by Empress Marie Louise, and this was Na actually Napoleon's second wife, so the famous Napoleon, obviously. I think that had to carry some some weight, and uh, his title was Virtuoso Honorario di Camera, and yeah, so this was bestowed upon him by Ma um, Empress Marie Louise, and it seems he was part of her entourage whenever they were in the same area. Giuliani's sets of Rossiniana are among some of his most prolific works, and it's been described as operatic potpourri for guitar, so I find that a very very uh, unique description and he used themes from Othello, Armida, Barbov, Seville and so forth and some of his other notable works include his Grand Overture and in total he composed over 150 works for the guitar and some of these include works for orchestra and solo guitar with violin also orchestra with solo guitar and flute so pretty unique as well. During his lifetime, Giuliani also joined a group, well, he was a member of a group called the Ludlumsgesellschaft, which was basically like a group of individuals, artists, musicians, uh, even politicians, it seems, and businessmen, and uh, it seems the only uh, requirement you had to have, like a kind of devil may care, maverick renegade, jack the lad kind of attitude, and that would basically be enough to to make you a member, but just uh, just thought that's interesting and shows a bit of his character and personality as well. So Giuliani spent a large portion of his life actually in um, outside of Italy, most of his life, because musicians in Italy had a, well many musicians in Italy had a general exodus from Italy because of the prominence of opera music, so obviously the guitar isn't uh, that, that doesn't work with opera music. So for anyone who wasn't uh, planning on being a, a writing opera, it was uh, better to, to go to a country that was a bit more sympathetic to the guitar. So I just thought mentioning that. Uh, and then the lyre guitar was an instrument very similar to the guitar. It had a shorter, shorter fretboard or fingerboard. And um, this was mar mostly marketed to, to females and mostly amateur females. And Giuliani, towards the later part of his life, actually became very interested in this lyre guitar and played it himself. So you can see he was a singer, played the cello, very virtuoso guitarist, and seems to have dabbled in this lyre guitar as well. And it was it's somewhat it w would have been somewhat strange for him to be playing that because of the association that it's meant to be played. Uh, by, by, by a female. And then something I find a bit more relevant you won't find really on in like most books I think published or that mention Giuliani is uh, one of his uh, compositions is actually used in Counter-Strike which is like a game for the computer like I think most guys know Counter-Strike it's like you're either terrorist or counter-terrorist but then in the Italy map they actually use uh, one of Giuliani's pieces so that's pretty cool I thought just worth mentioning. And I think I might have forgot to mention but the song that plays in Counter-Strike the composition by um, Giuliani is Ros the introduction from, from the Rossiniana number two so introduction Rossiniana number two plays in Counter-Strike in the Italy map. So just to conclude, um, Giuliani, more than anyone else, is responsible for the guitar being accepted as a solo instrument. Um, before Giuliani's time, the guitar was basically just seen as an instrument that could accompany singers and that could accompany other solo instruments like a violin or a flute or so forth, but it was never regarded as a full-fledged instrument on its own, capable of being a concert solo instrument. And after Giuliani's time, he really 
had people thinking about this and really, you know, uh, established a guitar as a as a concert instrument and a solo instrument. So he also invented a specific system of notation that you still find very common today, where specific notes, the stems are facing certain directions to indicate whether that specific note is part of the melody, whether it's part of a bass line or whether it's part of like an internal harmonic structure. So specific stems pointing in specific di directions to uh, specify which notes should be, and this dictates how you should play them. For instance, uh, the melody you would play louder than the bass notes obviously, and you don't want to play crescendo for harmony where there's a melody being you know so so you kind of get the the gist of of, of what i'm trying to say so this um notation sim system was um invented specifically for the guitar and there wasn't really anything before this and um one of the earliest journals dedicated to the guitar was named in his honor and this was named the uh, uh, giuliani ad giuliani ad and so before this, there were journals dedicated to the guitar, but it just featured music, so it was just printed out music. There wasn't any text, text, any written out, you know, teach. So it was basically just, just basically music, where the Giuli Giuliani ad featured text as well, and it's something that's useful if you find a piece of music and it has some piece of description, some you know, describing a technique used or so forth. Mm -hmm.